No one passes through this life without coming to that point where you realize you are nothing. God will make you weep and the tears will be tears of joy. Darkness may surround you now. Light is going to shine again. A day is coming when you will look back and you will see where God brought you from. A message I titled Maximizing Life's Opportunities. Today I want to do part two of that message. And of course our text is drawn from Genesis chapter 27 from verse 5 to 14 and then from verse 43 and run it to 46. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. It is called the living word. Cause it to produce life in our hearts. In Jesus' name. So today I wish to bring or make a case through this message titled Maximizing Life's Opportunities. The case I want to make is the fact that the counsel you take in life, the advice you follow can build you or destroy you. In part one of this message, we looked at Ruth and how her mother-in-law, Naomi, was counseling her. Because they had their eyes on Boaz, a multi-millionaire of his time. I believe he was married, perhaps had grown-up children, but they were allowed to marry more than one. You could see how he was addressing Ruth, my daughter, my daughter, and all that. And Naomi felt, if this man can perform the duty of the king's man and take Ruth in, our problem shall be over. And so she was counseling on how she should conduct herself to make that vision come to pass. In part two, which I'm doing today, we'll begin to look at Jacob and how his mom was guiding him and eventually the ambition of the mom, which I believe tallied with God's ambition with that man came true. After the introduction, I'll go back to Ruth again and we begin to conclude. Theologians and anthropologists seem to agree that Jacob was 77 years of age by the time he arrived at Padan Aram. At that great age, the man was still a senior bachelor. I can't think of any man who clocked 77 and wished to marry and had not married. Isaac, his father, married at the age of 40. But now Jacob is hitting 80, double of his father's age. And no wife, no child. There were two factors responsible for that anomaly. Number one was his geographical placement. Genesis 27, 46 reports, and Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, like these who are the daughters of the land, what good will life be?
to me. Jacob would have been long married if he were living in Padan Aram where the type of women his mom envisioned for him were. So Rebecca was adamantly opposed to marriage by Jacob to the Canaanite women. But I started to query, could it be Rebecca was afraid of Esau and never advised him, don't marry from this place? I don't think so. She wanted him to marry from Padan Aram, being her people. They were closer to God. They were not too far from the kingdom, unlike the Canaanites, who were terrible people. Human beings sleeping with animals, father sleeping with daughter, brother sleeping with sister. But Jacob was ready to listen. But Eliezer, who traveled from Beersheba to Padan Aram to get the mom from that land of the Mesopotamians, I don't think he was still alive. Eliezer of Damascus went there 20 years before Jacob and Esau were born. Then add 77 years to it. That would give you 97 years. So it happened 97 years ago. So I seem to believe this servant faithful servant of Abraham must have died long ago and there was nobody to take that treacherous journey to go find wife for Jacob. That was the wish of mama. From Beersheba to Padan Aram in those days was 5,340 kilometers 5,340 kilometers away from Jos to Lagos through Benin and Shagamu is 1,018 kilometers. So, to cover the distance, Jacob was to cover from Beersheba to Padan Aram was like you trekking from here to Lagos. And then we put you on a flight, bring you back. And we say, make it again. You go the second time from Jaws straight into Lagos until you do it five times. That will be equal to the, <laughs> the distance Jacob was to cover. Abraham left that place years and years before and came to Beersheba. He never visited Padan Aram again. And there was nobody to come from there to bring news whether the people at home were okay or not. It was Eliezer of Damascus, the senior servant of Abraham, who went to get Isaac, sorry, who went to get Isaac a wife, who was telling them at home, God has blessed Abraham. He has become so great. And in his old age, God gave him a son. Abraham, your relative, has become a man of wealth. He has handed, ever, he has handed over everything to his son Isaac. And I've come here to bring a wife for that Isaac. This was great news. Those people never knew if Abraham was still alive, if he made the journey. It was a very long journey. Rebecca herself, who left with the senior servant of Abraham and came to the land of Canaan, never visited home again. Thanks to modern day transportation. I can leave Lagos, fly off on a Monday. Land at Columbus, Ohio, 
Tuesday by 11. Finish the business that sent me there. By Wednesday evening, I'm flying back to Lagos. Thursday, 11 a.m., I've landed. It wasn't so, it wasn't so in the past. So when you travel such a distance, you just stay there. Nobody hears about you. No mobile phone. No telegram. Nobody coming around. Because it was like you went from the land of the living to the land of demons. Hallelujah. So Rebecca was reluctant to release Jacob, the son she loved and worshipped to make such a treacherous journey. If Jacob left for Padan Aram, Rebecca was not sure she was going to see him again in her lifetime. So it was like procrastination. One of these days, you will go there to find a wife. Don't be in a hurry like your brother Esau. And that was how this thing continued lingering. And this man clocked 77 years of age. What a man that had years for parental counsel. But Rebecca had no choice. When Esau said, my father will soon die. And I'm going to kill my brother for stealing the Abrahamic blessing. So Rebecca was like, Jacob, you are like the four lepers. If you remain here, you will die. There is famine, there is death. If you go to the camp of the Assyrians, it's either they kill you or they will keep you alive and give you food. So my son, I don't want to be deprived of you and your brother in one day. Make this journey. May the God of Abraham lead you. If you get there, may his name be praised. If you die on the way, it's good to die trying. Hallelujah. That was how Jacob took off trekking all the way heading towards the land of the Mesopotamians. The Bible said when he arrived at Padan Aram public well he started asking questions. Does anybody here know of a man called Laban? He is my mother's brother. He's my uncle. And he said, look at Rachel. That's the daughter here. And he grabbed Rachel, kissed her, and started weeping. He never knew he would get there alive. That was why an old man like him was crying because he found the land the mom had been talking about. He wasn't sure he would get there in one piece. Kidnappers could take him out the way, sell him into slavery, wild animals could consume him and make feast of his carcass. Rebecca had two sons. One was called Esau, but Esau refused to listen to the mother's counsel. And you know, how life went for him. The one called Jacob listened to Mama's counsel. At his return, many, many years, I think it was 20 years, he lived in Padan Aram. After 20 years, he returned with four wives, 12 sons, and many daughters. The Bible spoke of when Jacob was mourning because Joseph's coat of many colors were brought, dripping with blood, 
The Bible says all his sons and all his daughters, more women are born than men. So only God knows how many daughters he had. He came home with all of them after 20 years. Listen to the gifts he gave to Esau. When they met Genesis 32, 14 to 15. They say he gave to Esau his brother 200 she goats, 20 he goats, 200 female sheep, 20 rams, 30 female camels, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, 10 male donkeys. Dr. Dex of Dex Bible costed it at $24,300. Multiply it by 581 naira, which was the exchange rate when I was doing this message. It comes to $14,118,300 naira. Imagine how great a man could be when he is able to give a gift of 14 million to a brother. God told Rebecca, commotion is going on in your womb. The secret is that you have two, you have twins. They are going to be nations. Two nations are in you. The older is going to serve the younger. So Jacob was born with God's prediction. It was a privileged promise. But he needed to maximize it by following mama's counsel. His mother's counsel also helped him to escape death in the hands of his brother Esau. One Tina Yothas once said, you have to have the guidance to lead you to the direction until you do, until you can do it yourself. Before you begin to do it yourself, you need guidance from some other people who will lead you to a point. And that was what Jacob did. Mama's counsel led him until he got to Padan Aram. There, there was no mother, no father. He took off from there, taking decisions, comporting himself, and doing the right things until he came back with four wives, 12 sons, and many daughters. He was like a man who climbed the Iroko tree. Uh, people say, when you climb the Iroko tree, all the firewood you find here, collect them. People don't climb the Iroko tree all the time. Hallelujah. So he gathered all the women in the house of Lebanon. After all, it was allowed then. Shout hallelujah. It was allowed. I know some of you are hungry to go back to that culture. <laughs> May God deliver you in Jesus' name. If one woman cannot satisfy you, <laughs> one thousand can satisfy you. They felt uh, Solomon. One James E. Forst said, boys and girls have confidence in the direction, counsel, and advice of your parents because they love you more than anybody else in the world does. Don't take for granted what daddy and mommy are saying to you. They love you so much. Don't mind those people claiming to love you. They cannot love you better than your parents. Except if your parents are demonic witches who will sacrifice their own children. Let's go back to Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was counseling Ruth but she was far older than Ruth. Naomi understood the Israeli culture, unlike Ruth, who just arrived from a hidden culture. 
Naomi had the best intentions at heart towards Ruth. Always check these three boxes when taking counsel. Consider the age and experience of the person counseling you. That's number one. Number two box. How, how much does he or she understand the subject matter? That's number two. Number three, the intention of your counselor matters. Proverbs 1.8 says, My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instructions. Listen to your father when he's correcting you. And don't neglect your mama's instruction. Your parents are far older than you. The older we get in life, the more experienced we become. A master's quote says, don't take advice on life journey from people who never escaped their jungle. They are still living in jungle and they are teaching you how to escape jungle. Don't take counsel from such people. How I wish that my pastors and my members can listen to me. Listen to me when I talk. Listen to me. There is something I have. I have traveled widely. More than most of you. I'm not boasting. It's God's favor. By the 26th of July this year, I'll be clocking 51 years in ministry, leading people, pastoring, counseling, watching things, and helping people get through life struggles. 51 years. Look at me. Look at my family. Look at my daughter. I was advising her. I was encouraging her. I was pushing her until she left home. And when she got there, she picked it up from there. I was worried for her, my only daughter. Who is she going to marry? But she kept following the path. I prepared for her and God prepared for her until she got the right man. And out of that marriage, I have three wonderful grandchildren. Hallelujah. What do you call success? What do you call success? Look at my sons. Biological and adopted. I was the one advising, guiding. I was the captain of the ship. From time to time we fell out. And I insisted. But out of love. Hallelujah. I knew how to relate. I remember giving my son that target. You must pass this subject. With high grade. Then I will show you what love means. And the son of the chief of air staff, who was his classmate in Air Force Military School, he was visiting with a cousin, a girl. And young boys like to show off the four girls. He was to go pick them on Sunday morning and bring them to church. And he begged, Dad, can I use your best car? 2000 series Peugeot. PL2222BK. I said, yes, you can have it. Late that night, he knocked on my door. Dad, can I borrow those new shoes you bought? I said, come on, get away. <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> 
He went away after some time. I went and knocked and I delivered the shoes. He wore it that Sunday morning, driving my car. Now, when he's going to move in with big people, are you going to be pretending your father is a poor pastor? You'll be your best. So that's how I raised my children. I understood that at that age, this is how life goes. You don't begin to call them Satan. Uh -huh. I know you lost. You want to, yeah, you want to please a girl. No, it is natural. All of us did it. Didn't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I was guiding. I was showing them maturity. We are there. We are, I needed to give very stern rebuke, rebuke. I gave it. We are, I needed to calm down to their level. Discuss things. Many people don't discuss with their children. We discussed it and laughed. Hallelujah. We hope this message has inspired you. Thank you for watching. To other for this message, please call 80 God bless you.